Ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Khan Ulrich. And I'm Rangaroo, low, low, low. It is a new week, which means we have more replays from the SD2 Season 2 League that's going on right about now. I could not tell you off the top of my head which group this is, but what I can tell you is right now we are looking at Orsha East. You can always tell that by the gingerbread man head that is looking at us upside down. But I guess more important than, than that, Rang, who is fighting and uh, what are they bringing to the field? Well, on the left-hand side in blue, we have Maxwell playing as the first Ski Jaeger division. And on the right-hand side, we have ourselves Vincent playing as the first Polish Rifle Infantry division. Maxwell is with a Maverick income, and Vincent with a Vanguard income. You know, a part of me knows the reason that uh, this replay is coming up. We've we got to be celebrating the Finn division coming out soon, aren't we, with the Ski mm -hmm. Troops and all that? It's going to be next week they come out. Yes, it is. Actually, yeah, you're right, March 1st. Actually, I think it's Sunday, is it not? No, maybe. Uh, March 3rd. March 3rd. Thank you very much. My days are all screwed up with leap year. But in the meantime, of course, with the polls against the Ski Jaeger, Ski Jaeger has been a little underperforming the last couple of matches that we've seen them in. Yeah, they're a pretty tough division to play as. They're very, the, the infantry is like cool and pretty good. But SD2 really kind of favors this infantry spam in general. And compared to, like, they've got STGs and S submachine gun troops. But the, uh, what's it called? The 76th, 7th Division? 73rd, something like that? Mm -hmm. They're just, just a bit better in, in that regard. But you do have some cool artillery, some cool, you know, tanks, KV2s, of course. You can make them work. You just have to be a bit more micro intensive with your infantry and that is certainly a big ask sometimes mm. uh being micro intensive i know that we have had people complain about uh let's say mishandling infantry in the last couple of weeks here but but it gets very overwhelming i'm sure as, as you it well does. know it um does. but anything else interesting that we can kind of talk about with the next dlc can you think of anything off the top of your head that just seems like it's gonna come out and just really be so freaking cool and interesting uh the Finns have some very cool, like, some, some really cool interesting units. Just, just some real oddballs, so to speak. So, yeah, and the Russians as well, they're going to have a lot of cool stuff with the Mountain Infantry. Uh, the, the, the Russian divisions are more, like, second rate rather than the top tier ones that we've seen, you know, baseline SD44. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be fun. Like, the one thing I really like so far of how they've handled the DLCs of SD2 is that none of the divisions feel, like, crazy overpowered. <laughs> like, oh, through within under, reason, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Desert rats. Like, they have good niches, but they're not they're not going to break the game, really. The only one that you could argue for is 5th SS, uh, Viking. But even then, there's other divisions that can do what they do pretty well. That is certainly true. I mean, I, I think the thing that's always kind of nice about this game is that they seem to have gone for a lot more fidelity in terms of the division setups. Yeah. Like, the Finns, as you mentioned, having a ton of oddball units, well, you have to realize there were ten divisions, and a lot of other troops were just kind of like, oh, yeah, you uh, you know Hans down the street? Yeah, Jürgen, I have fought with him before. And I was like, yes, Kristolfsson, we've all fought together and had a shooting competition last season. These are the kind of guys that fought in the war. It just absolutely boggles my mind sometimes. Yeah. Uh, but we are getting started right here. We actually have an early mortar from um, the Ski Jaeger. Definitely worthwhile. The 120 mil, though, is only a single piece. And I do not know that's going to be enough to keep all these Ogdenbochiki wannabes at bay. Certainly not with all this extra infantry coming up in close support. Yeah, fighting against first Polish infantry is a scary, scary thing. It's like just, just a horde of dudes. And the middle is already popping off an anti tank rifle, kill an infantry unit before it can unload. We got some Sturm Ski Jaegers in there with assault rifles, which are, of course, already very nice to have, but there's flamethrower teams and more some like, strokey DP squads. Certainly true. Now, down south, we are going to have a bit of, of a one side of the engagement, I would imagine. Good lord. Yes. Uh, also, Ski Jaegers are re bit outnumbered, and one shows Tank Disney is getting close, and the Molotovs are popped. Yeah, we go. Well, I, I think they're just trying to share the celebration right here, and it is 14-10 already. Um, Maxwell kind of getting socked in the face. Mm-hmm. 
But I, I have to confess, it's sort of what we expected. Yeah, just the infantry numbers and also the income. Like Finn's and stuff, they're going to be playing for very aggressive uh, A phase. And this is a good map for an infantry, like a heavily focused infantry division. Because there's a lot of cover, lots of forests and towns to run around in. Certainly true. You know, I didn't even realize that the Ski Pioneer Fuhrers have a, K have a scoped K98. Yeah, what's I... even funnier is that they have 10 shops with it. Yes. And there's like also a bunch of regular car 98 in the scroll. You think someone could like, hey, here's, here's like a clip or two of ammunition. Well, yeah, you know, but at the same time, it gets a fire rate. They don't expect the sniper to be around that long, so... You get you get ten shots, and, and that's <laughs> it, Hans. But I, I've already run out of shots! <laughs> well, uh, well, we can't give you ours. Uh, you know, the, it's important to us. I've been attached to my ammunition. Exactly, exactly. The quartermaster mm. will have my head. I understand that. Exactly. Now, we are seeing a new wave of troops and tracks coming on forward. A couple BA-10s, T-70s, more strokey CVTs. Uh, excuse me, SVTs, wow. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, the, the Ski Jaegers are, are desperately trying to get some more troops into combat. This T-34-85 could be decently okay, but there's still an SU-57 down there. Yeah, and also, like, you can kill tanks and whatnot with the T-34-85, but... To, to break out stuff inside, you're gonna need mortars. You're gonna need some a lot of artillery. And I guess... Oh no, the recon optics. I was thinking for a second, how the heck did he see him? But the SU-57 is one of those an curious anti-tank guns. Yeah, it's an absolutely baller line of sight. A balling gun as well. And did he do? Well, we are gonna see right now T-34s engaging uh, T-34. Uh, though I think it's 76, isn't it, on the... Polish side yeah, there, yep. They don't get any 85, so the tank force is pretty mediocre with only T-34, 76s, and uh, T-70s, and US 85s. But on a map like this, it's not too bad as it's nice and close quarters. As I'm trying to see where this new infantry is getting dropped on off, well, we are going to have it coming out hither and yon, um, just kind of holding the, the town a little bit tighter. Yep. Kind of as you'd expect. A second mortar coming into the south, that's a good call there. Sharpshoots and moving on in, but the sharp I think the sharpshoots in here were just kind of being used as a, I don't want to say area denial, but maybe just spotting for that T-3485 that we start putting shots in the SU-57. Yeah, and also if anyone dares peek your head out of their forest, they're not going to have a fun time. Or one or two guys on as they get headshotted. That's true, that's true, but these are 60 shots as opposed to the 10 that we had just seen before. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> we're seeing the K-98 right now actually engaging troops in the center of town. Uh, along with MG to kind of put some fire down onto those uh, strokey CKMs. Yep, and we're seeing our first uh, plane of the map, so straight in Dornia. And this is the nice thing about Ski you do have a lot of good airplanes, and a lot of those are do 217s So if he can use them to just strafe all the polar stuff, he should have a you know, decent time. The poles, I think they're not decent here, empty air. They've got some M17s being brought in now. Uh, we do have a knee mortar being fired off here. I say knee mortar be just because the 82 mil by comparison is just a rinky dink nothing. Um, but engaging probably this only point of the line that Maxwell has a considerable advantage. And that's these two infantry to the northern side of the central town. Yeah, we're really starting to see one of the problems with Ski Ego. You just don't have a lot of infantry in terms of numbers. Yes, you got veteran sheen. You know, veteran sheen is okay. But just having more troops in an unfettered manner is is really the way to go in ST. Uh, but worth mentioning, right now, you know, we seem to be on the African savannah, because those are a couple of gazelles I see coming in the center part of the line. Oh, oh, oh. Kind of exciting, actually. Yeah, they're fun little tanks. I mean, well, tank destroyers, I should say. Bare minimum of a tank destroyer, but hey, if it works, it works. And the gazelle does do a lot of work for only 20 points. It is an absolute bargain of a unit. Uh, we do have a couple of ZSUs now, kind of gently encouraging one of those Dornier 217s to head for the rear. Yeah, and I think that's going to be rather successful in that convincing argument of high explosive firepower. It would certainly convince me, I can tell you that much. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out Dornier's... Dornier's making gun runs on the BA-10s. 
I, I don't know that I agree with being quite so insistent going after these scout cars. I think I'd rather be going after this this half tracks or even stressing at this T thirty four seventy six. Especially the well, anti, uh, I think he's gonna not make it back home. Exactly. Oh no! Ooh. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, it's a rather sturdy plane, so we'll see surviving that. We are seeing a Stuka popping down south to drop one bomb on one uh, support gun. True, and and he's probably going to get nicked here as a Yak comes on in after him. Yep. So it might be his final dive. Oh no, he has to pull oh. out of his dive. That was perfect. Absolute clutch. And then the half track took him out. <laughs> what? Holy! Oh, it's a fifty cal half track. What the <laughs> hell? That is, jeez. I have nothing to say about it. That is jeez. Is probably the best way to even describe it. Mm -hmm. Almost as much as the T seventy taking out both gazelles. Uh, yeah. Apparently, he's a bit of a poacher. Yeah. Um, because those gazelles not really the the best idea under their circumstances here. Mm -hmm. Now, outside of that, we are limping towards the second phase when things should hopefully get better for Maxwell, but right now, his, um, well, he's having a hard time. Let's just put it that way. Let's call he it this. is. He just doesn't have the numbers to deal with all of these pose, but hopefully by B phase, he'll have more infantry to actually uh, play around with and start trying to fight back. He definitely has the tank firepower. And maybe the air power, which should help out if he manages to use them efficiently. You know, it is interesting. We are seeing Sapipsi trying to clear out those ski Jäger Fusiliers. And doing mm -hmm. decently well at it, actually. I'm surprised. Why the heck are the Pioneer squads like the, the be all end all in these games? I will never know. Party folk, to be sure, though. Yeah. Pioneers of their time. Ironic, considering nobody wanted to be in the Pioneers just because it was such like a dirty, thankless job. Yep. Uh, but BA-10s and T-70s putting fire on these skier MG-42s. It does not matter how heavy that machine gun is, you are not piercing, you know, 40 millimeters of armor. No, no, we are not. And Dornier is coming in once again. Only trying to kill his uh, rinky-dink armored cars. But Vincent Ayana is pretty strong. Now he's got some of those uh, yak rocket plane to try and help out. Unfortunately, there is no anti-air net the other direction. Oh, there's like one trinity mil, but it's not really much of an anti-aircraft net. It's like a, it's like a net with a bunch of holes, and there's a very small net that you use to butterflies. going to say, isn't that the kind of a point of a net in the first place, to have many small holes, or...? But like, too many holes. Ah, okay, so it's kind of like trying to carry water with a sieve. Yeah, I've I've done that. It took me a very long time. Oh my gosh! Run very fast. <laughs> um, I confess, I was looking down. I was waiting for yep. these Jagdpanzer gazelles to get knocked out here, but shockingly enough, they have survived, and we have limped into phase B. So the question is, what will be done from Maxwell's side? Hopefully, capture some flags because he's really down on the flags at the moment. Yes, he not, is. Not looking good for him. Only has a third of the territory on the map. So, here we go. He's bringing in some, a lot of ski acres now, which is what he needs. Probably a bit more artillery to help out as well. But yeah, this is really going to come down to a numbers game, I think. Well, he formerly had another mortar, but that second mortar got, well, mortared pretty damn quick as well. Mm -hmm. And I'm not feeling particularly confident when I see that we have three two three fours and two support vehicles between the T seventy and an SU fifty seven. Not liking his chances here. I'm I'm not liking either. Uh, Yak up north. Is he gonna secure the kill? Yeah, he's got to. Yeah. Took him a while, but he got it. I think the Yak seven Bs though. I think there's that very light armament. Yeah, yes, I know it's a 20 mil, but it's just, it's not it's really that much. It's pretty light. He, and to focus on that too, oh, he has a it. rather light fuselage, it gets pierced. Mm -hmm. There we go, we got Marders being brought in, more 20 mils. This is, Max has got to get a bit of momentum now. He really needs to try and get back on that hill. 
I mean, it does have a foothold on it still, because if you didn't have that foothold, it would pretty much been game over, as you can't get back on on top of that place. But here's the Sony Sapichi and infantry and just pose in general, because pose are very good at spam. Mm-hmm. Rather uh, durable chaps they are. Yeah, they put Monty Python the same amount of spam they have. <laughs> That's certainly true. It's been a long time since I've even heard that particular skit reference, so well done there. Um, not seeing that extra artillery that you were talking about just yet. Yeah. They're just bringing a bunch of ski eggers to try and push into that hillside. You know, the problem is they're pretty close together. And you know, C-34s are kind of scary in T-70s. Even though they're not the best of tanks, and there's close quarters engagement where they can just shoot something in that crest chill for the hill, they got first shot advantage, and even if they're rinky dink guns, it doesn't matter, they're probably going to get a penetration hit. And between all the infantry that's right there as well, even these ski jaegers, I mean, under any other circumstances, they would equip themselves decently well against the SVTs, or just the, the strokies that are in the town. Yeah. But with the recon and everything else, there's really no point to even bringing them there without the artillery. Yup, yup. It's not looking good for him. No, it is not. But, um, you know, we have said the points definitely do matter. This is not exactly like whose line here. But we also have an SU-76 being brought in from the backfield of the pole position, so, um... As I'm looking yeah. around, some really strange things happened. There was a, a pack in that forest just north of the town that was able to either kill crews or force bailouts. Unfortunately, he's not going to get credit for any of those kills because he technically didn't kill them yet. At least they're knocked out just for now. We've got Skiagos trying to flank into that northern town. And it is actually working rather well with the 50 cal half tracker it wants to say Alvarez. And once they run into your tank destiny to keep squad, it's it's gonna get pretty deadly. Yeah. And then the rocket. Oh that's brutal. Yeah, that's brutal. Yes, it is. Yeah. But uh yeah, it's still not looking good for Max. He's still down 717. He needs he he really needs to make something happen. And it looks like he's doing that down south. Look, yeah, he's got smoke onto the forest, but not much smoke. And he's running half tracks into a very deadly anti tank gun nest. Oh, oh boy. Yeah, pretty bad when the PTRSs are just kind of like, oh, thank you, thank you so much for your donation to our kill count. Yeah, that was a very risky maneuver, and it didn't pay off. It's a shame he didn't have to get more smoke off onto that point before moving up. Honestly, I was more focused initially on the Dornier uh, bombing run that was happening in the center of town. Unfortunately, the 50k bombs, uh, to call them pop guns, is extremely, extremely generous. Yep. Is that... I thought, I thought it was off map, but it was just an SU-76M. Oh, yeah. Very engaging close center. to the town. Yes. Yeah, I'm surprised by that. I think it's because he's using attack move, which unfortunately every now and again has the effect of saying, oh, AP shells, right, so i got to keep moving forward until I can hit vehicles. Uh, I'm also thinking he's doing that so he can use his own, like, artillery spotting radius to get, like, very accurate shots. Risky maneuver, but it could pay off, because the thing with Pose is that you don't have a lot of artillery observer units. you got you got the artillery dudes... In the artillery tower, but that's truly really, uh, anyone commander. But you're not going to move up your commander out close. That'd be a bit silly. It certainly would. Now, unfortunately, that mortar that's down south has just done a really, really great work in suppressing all of that material. But there's no one there to follow it up, and there's not going to be for another 25 or 30 seconds pretty easily. Yeah, and he's bringing a lot of fire support now down south. He's got two grills and a bunch of infantry. Matro is really determined to break in at seven. Southern Forest, and I think he now has enough stuff to do it. Yes, but to what end? You have four flags there, that's for sure, but that actually still keeps him down. Yeah, he needs to get a foothold into the like the, the hill, essentially. And he's pushing just a wee bit to get a flag, but Finzen, he's got the numbers, man. He is keeping Maxwell pinned up and tied. 
Yep, and these brave infantry squads that keep going to this town just get nuked the second they get close. Yeah, and you just don't have the numbers to be losing this many uh, Ski Jaegers in general. You just do not have much. Well, and our old friend the rocket plane is back. Watch him stress out this entire armor blob. Hmm. I, I, I confess I expected more from him. Same but... here. Same here. By well, this time, you want nine coming over the central part of the field. Not sure that's such a great idea. Yep, already oil leak. Yep. May you want to, you know, run away now. Yeah. Yeah, that's very. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. It's a yeah from. Whoa. Mortar just shelled. Was that a couple of munitions trucks in the center from the poles? What happened? The. There were two munitions trucks in that north central town. If actually, if you scope in on that main thoroughfare right by the bailed out ZS uh, M17, mm -hmm. you will notice that there are two trucks that there that are rather blocky. Oh yeah. I think two munitions trucks just got taken out by one mortar shell. Now, if that's right, my first question is why were there two mortar trucks there? There might have been transport trucks, maybe, like infantry transports. Maybe that's entirely oh. possible. But I'm going to keep an eye out for it. Haze after we're done with this. Yeah. Oh god, this is... Uh, Max Rowe is trying to move up his tanks in the middle, but yeah, this is 45mm anti-tank gun, who says Alpha Rise. Yep. Uh, but we are going to get that rather brave Dornier come back the other direction. Bombs away. He gets them off. Yeah. Unfortunately, I think he might drop them along. Oh, the SU-26 no. in the middle is the, not the artillery run, it's the direct fire run. Now that's right, he has it up close. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's one of the right. ATCR cells, because the uh, artillery run in the artillery tab has the uh, smoke ammo. Thank you. What, I seems yeah. so curious to me, but alright. Good to know. Down south, T-3485 that had been spearheading this attack is now dead. And judging by just the amount of burning wreckage on that road, I don't know that many other Ski Jaegers are coming. I, I don't think so either. There's two anti-tank guns in that forest, as well as a bunch of strud keys, and now some Sturmer, like I think it was like after the cheeky scrolls. I thought and... it was Sturmer Hikis, but fair enough. Um, and if that wasn't enough, we actually have four T-70s coming in, as well as a T-34-76. Uh, I know it doesn't sound like much, but that's going to be just enough at least to plug the gap for another few minutes. Yep. Yeah, it's like a Stramafiki squad. Uh, not Stramafiki, wow. You're right. It's the That's tank true. that they sent Niki. But there we go. Man's in the cat's mouth in the open of the pants down. And that's going to ripe out one. But there's still a bunch of Russians in there, I would pose, I should say. Yeah, I, I was going to say, that's probably yeah. not one of those confusion moments you want to make <laughs> with those guys. <laughs> no, not not one bit. Up north, we're actually seeing a re bit of action now. As Finzen is starting to aggress. And if he manages to take his northern flank, just, just to pressure alone is definitely going to save him some time. Yes, sir. Um, biggest thing there is just that single MG42, but that will blow through rounds like it's his job. So, Outside of that, I, I guess maybe we'll see a couple other light vehicles coming in. Nope, more Ski Jaegers. More Ski Jaegers. Yeah. As you might suspect at this point, the bulk of material here is just going to be kind of more of the same. And if you look down to the south, for some reason we actually have an, the Opal Blitz moving a mortar so close that I actually don't know if mortars have minimum fire distance. I think it's only like 100, 200 meters or something, so it's pretty it's pretty close how minimum they can fire. Not sure if I'd make that particular call, but hey, yeah. you know. I think he's getting desperate now. He really just, he really wants to capture his southern side. And he is only at 10.14. So he's only in two flags away from shoring it up. But those T-70s, they're just going to be terrifying in that forest. There's not much anti-tank yet. No, sir. Not unless you play uh, the Panzerfaust game. You have to get awfully close for that at the moment. Yeah. Just just how like, line of sight works in a light forest. It's a little bit hard to get close to the Panzerfaust. What a shame he did not drop that mortar barrage just another 50 meters beyond. Yep. Oh well. Fair the the hero is still very well secured here by Finns and just got all those strokey strokes and they're just terrible. Just 
really terrifying, the numbers that you can get. Certainly is. Uh, how would you have played this matchup? Uh, that's a good point. I think I wouldn't play Ski Eager. Just, it's just yeah. like infantry numbers. Like, yeah. it, especially on this map, it really just comes down to who has like the better infantry and like, like tank span. And poles are very good in this particular close range playstyle. This is this is how the, you, you play Polis first infantry down to a team. Just spam infantry, spam tanks, only fight close range. Holy this was... mother of god, I'm sorry, just look at the go middle ahead. town, just watch the tracers going in every direction. Oh god, that is it's getting brutal, yeah. It's getting brutal. I'm sorry. I completely Yeah, if you. this was like a more open map, I think Ski Eagles actually have a better time because they can use their tanks to the advantage. But above that, you just have to bring more infantry spam division. Like 70, it's 78th spam division. That's, just, that's the number, 78. Not well, 76 that's, or 73. That's still a C, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, Dornier 217 going after that artillery piece. Interesting decision there, but I guess I can understand it. Yeah. This is too much chaff to kill. We have Vincent. Great job, players in the pose. Certainly true. I guess I'm watching these T34 85s go into this town. Oh, excuse me, T34 42. Kind of fascinated to watch these PTRDs start taking, picking off rounds at them. Yep. That's that's some that's a lovely thing with these like stroke DP scorches. Is that extra anti tank? Yes, it's not great anti tank, but you can just stun stuff up to hell and back. And when most of your scrotch have an anti-tank rifle, it really deters any vehicle play in town. It just shuts it down. It certainly does. It certainly does. And as we kick off the last couple of seconds here, I think it's fair to say that Max was victim of his own kind of divisional matchup. Yeah. This ski egg is hard to play. It's just that infant, especially on this map, it didn't really favor him well at all. No, it did not. Um, but there you have it. In 24 minutes, 7 seconds, unfortunately, it did go down. But, kills. yeah, I'm surprised by that, actually. Same. I'm, I'm really surprised about that, too. Looking at kills here. Like, nothing too minor standouts. crazy. But, like, you know, 50 cow half jack killing a bunch of stuff is pretty cool. That's by nice. the way, that mortar yep, oh, took out yep. two munitions trucks. Oh, wow. Holy crap, that's... Paid himself rather well, I would say. Wow. That's... A... <laughs> that's pretty funny. That's pretty funny. And now we got, uh, like, D-3045 is okay, T-3442 But nothing too crazy. No, but, like, um, yeah, they're not gonna belabor their point any further. Unfortunately, Max was just a, a bad pick going into that particular matchup, certainly on Orsha East. Yeah. Um, but guys, I mean, I guess that's that's how it is. If you're going to go skiing, uh, do it in some place that doesn't give you, well, wide open spaces. Um, you, you want to ski in wide open spaces or ski eager, because then you have free rain and you can put the T-34 on top of your ski hill to protect you as you go skiing down. Unless there are yetis. Yetis, I hear, are quite vicious during the ski season. Yeah, and they got pretty high armor value. The the AP is just not going to go free them. No, sorry, you need the APCR shells. But, um, yep. folks, before we uh, go off on an avalanche of other ideas, um, I think we've said all we need to say about this particular matchup. Yes, I think so too. Sounds good. All right, folks, until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rangaroo. Take it easy.